friends, we meet again. This is Florence, and today let us talk about a dark veil that covers the eyes of many of us who are of the body of Christ. We are going to talk about this so that God can eradicate this veil so that we can see things as they really, really are. Hallelujah. Have you ever been thousands of miles up in the sky, either in an aeroplane or as a sky diver, looking down and seeing cars that looked just like ants, very, very small. And these cars are moving to and from their destinations. Now, we need to know that from the perspective of God, if we are in this race, this human race, and we are not sandwiched within the order that God has intended for us, then we as human beings who are actually supposed to be second in order from the Trinity, we will look worse than ants we will look more minute than ants. And King Solomon said that we have to learn from ants, that we have to look at nature and see what is actually unfolding with nature. Because nature is working in perfect harmony with the will of God. Have you ever looked at the birds of the air and seen how some species can migrate from Europe and end up somewhere in Africa and leave their young behind? And they are young, then grow up, and then also migrate following the exact same route that was taken by their parents. How is it that these young birds are able to do this and they end up in the exact spot that their parents have parched all the way in Africa. So, we see that scientists have discovered that these birds have a navigation system that is inborn. This is a wonder of nature. God has put this within them. And that is why they are able to figure out attitude, latitude by the stars and be able to move massive distances because the Lord has wired this in them and they are in perfect harmony with God. Now we see this not just with birds, we see this all over. We see this with even trees. The trees just grow up in harmony with the Lord and everything seems to be perfect in nature. From the smallest ant to the biggest creature, it is a wonder of nature. When we look at uh, the stark contrast between the nature 
when we compare nature and human beings. You can wonder, have you ever seen a bird trying to build a noose from some reeds in order to take its life because it has had enough? Have you ever seen a cow mowing for, 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 for beer or for, for, for drugs because it has had enough and it cannot take it anymore? Why is it that we as humans are waxing worse than creatures that are supposed to be below us. Well, we understand that we are in a fallen nature. We have fallen because of the sin that entered into the earth through our first parents. And when this happened, we did not only lose everything that we had from perfect health and holiness and eternal life, but we also lost something very crucial. We lost our fellowship, the life-giving fellowship that God intended to infuse within us. We lost that and we as humans are in desperate shape and we need restoration. We see that God has always wanted to bring us back to himself. Our loving God has made these attempts from thousands of years ago with the children of Israel when he came down and he became their leader because we all know that he led them as a cloud by day and as a fire by night. The Lord intended that the children of Israel should be a prototype, a group of people who would showcase to the world how people that are in union with God are, how they move in signs, how they move in wonders, how they move in miracles. Hallelujah. Now that is exactly what we have seen. We have seen God part the Red Sea. We have seen him cause waters to come out of the rocks. We have seen God cause people that are in the flames of fire come out of the flames with even their hairs not singed. We have seen manna raining from heaven. You see, this is the life of the God kind. We have to understand, we have, as humans, we have always wanted to have our own leaders. Even the Israelites got to a place where they demanded a leader from Samuel, who was ordained by God to be their judge. God has always wanted to be our leader. He has always wanted us to look up to him and for us to have a very close-knit relationship with him. And that was the intention of creation. God intended that we be very, very 
closely knit with him and in fellowship with him. He wanted a people that would fellowship with him because they wanted to fellowship with him. And that is the reason why he gave us something called free will. Hallelujah. So we have already spoken about us using our free will to exert our own desires and to exert our own thoughts, our own beliefs, and forgetting about our gracious, loving, loyal maker who knit us together in our mother's womb and who watched us form in our mother's womb, brought us forth. And then now that we have realized that we have free will, we are turning away from him and doing things the way we dictate. So the restoration that God desires to bring to our lives is the restoration of understanding that his spirit and our spirits must fuse. There has to be the fusion of the Holy Spirit of God with our spirits. We are a triune being. We have a body, which is the earth suit. We have a soul, which contains the mind, will, and emotions. The soul is also the filter between the body and the spirit. We also have a spirit, and the spirit lives eternally in heaven or in hell, depending on how we decide to live our lives. So the soul, the mind, will, and emotions decides, the soul decides whether to listen to the spirit man or not. The body can be involved in some carnal or fleshly activity, but the spirit man is the one who raises the flag and lets the soul know that this is not right. Now, the soul can decide whether to ignore the, the flag that the spirit man has raised or the soul can decide to cooperate with the body and start serving the body and tell, telling the body, oh, you know what? This actually feels very good. I'm just going to continue doing this fleshly, this carnal act, this sin. I'm just going to continue doing this because it feels good. So the soul is where the battle rages. The mind, the will, and the emotions. Hallelujah. So, so God desires that the spirit be king, that the soul be the servant of the spirit, and that the body be a slave. This is the proper hierarchical order of our triune nature, and God desires that we be in this order. We should not have the body as the king, the body doing everything that it wants to do, having all these carnal relationships, eating however it wants to. But our soul should serve the spirit man and the body should be a slave. So the spirit should be king, the soul should be the servant, and the body should be the slave. Hallelujah.
If we have it upside down, then we're going to have the body as the king, the soul serving the body, and the spirit is going to be a dying, a dying slave, a dying slave. So God wants us to know that his restoration really pertains to his spirit, the Holy Spirit being infused within us. The word of God says here in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 16, may he grant you out of the rich treasure of his glory to be strengthened, reinforced with mighty power, kingly power in the inner man, which is the spirit, by the Holy Spirit indwelling your innermost beings and personality. Hallelujah. So the Spirit of God wants to infuse our innermost beings so that he can build us and cause us to be the standard height of Jesus Christ. The Lord has already spoken that he is going to build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will build my church. Matthew 16, 18. My church. So which means when God speaks something, it is settled. When he says that he is going to build his church, and the gates of hell will never, ever prevail against it, then that is a settled matter. The Lord will always have a people. He had a people during the time of the Israelites, during the days of our patriarchs. Even today, we are the remnant of the kingdom of God. God still has a people. He is building us and the gates of hell will never ever prevail against us. Hallelujah. So what God is bringing us to understand, fear, mistrust, and unbelief can we talk about this and can we be real? Because when fear, mistrust, and unbelief take over wisdom and revelation, you can be sure that there will be spiritual cataracts. There will be spiritual deafness. There will be disorder from the inside out. And we see that God had intended for the church to be at the forefront, to grip the world with his power. We see that the early church and the disciples for a time were able to live with this life force of God infusing their bellies exactly the way God intended for us to live. Even at the Garden of Eden, infused with the power of God, because that is how Adam could even name all the animals. That is how we had taken dominion before the crawling snake came and we were unable to resist his enticing words. The Lord had intended that we grip this world as the disciples did for that short period of time during the early church. 
But we cannot keep looking at the times of the early church because the early church was the birth of the church. We are at the end times. And there has to be radical changes in each and every one who is in the body of Christ. So that we can run the race the way the Lord intended for us to run this race. We are in the end time cycle of harvest. And we need to ask the Lord to do spiritual surgery and take away this spiritual cataracts that are covering our eyes and we cannot be able to see ourselves the way we truly are. We have allowed the world to literally overtake the church instead of the other way round. Even the leaders during the times of the early church, they would come and fall before the church and they would ask, what must we do that we might be saved? And they would say to them, you must be born again. You must be baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, that you might see the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. What do we see today? We see leaders laying hands on the word of our God. They lay one hand on the word of God and, and lift the other hand up and begin to swear by the word of our God, but then turn around and start making laws that are diametrically opposed to the word of our God. Do not swear by the word of God if you will not stand by his rules. This is mockery and this is scoffing of the church. So we see that we have deviated from how we were during the birth of the church. And because these are the end times, the Lord expects that the soldiers who are to run the last leg of this race that they should be the fastest, that they should be the strongest soldiers with the greatest intestinal fortitude, that they should be the boldest soldiers who will speak forth the word of God with no fear. This is the time that we, as the body of Christ, should turn to the Lord in repentance and ask the Lord to perform the surgery that we so desperately need because many of us are blinded and we need to step away from the rules and regulations that were formed during the dark ages. Those are the times when real cataracts started to get into our eyes, our spiritual eyes, because that's when rules, myriads and myriads of them, that's when we started forming all kinds of branches from the one offshoot that the Lord had started with the disciples and with the early church. It was only one offshoot. But right now, what do we have? America has about 250 denominations. This is a staggering number. The world has 45,000 denominations. All from the one offshoot that God formed in the very beginning. Let us pray and let us repent to the Lord. Father, we admit that there is a fog in our eyes. This fog, oh God, is in many of us who are of the body of Christ. Our spiritual cataracts are causing us not to see ourselves as we really are. 
We have deviated from our simple state and single-mindedness that you put within our souls at the very beginning when you created your church and you birthed your church out of the gruesome death of your son on the cross. We come before you repenting and asking that you may forgive us, our Lord and our God. We have forgotten, Father, about being led by your Holy Spirit. And ahead of him are our man-made forms, our man-made rules and regulations. We lack intimacy with your Spirit, O oh God. We have, Father, a form of godliness, and yet we lack the power thereof. This has made it easy for us to be disillusioned and to be gullible to so many spirits and so many voices in these end times. We repent, our Lord and our God, for not spending time with you. Cause us to hunger for your power so that the spirit can perform spiritual cataract surgery that we may truly see in the realm of the spirit. We want to love you. We want to know you as you are, O oh Lord. We want to serve you, our God. And we want to win souls to your kingdom. Even as the early church did, we want that the church should be lifted up on a hill and that it should not be hidden, but that the world should run to the church and be saved. Hallelujah. We want to see you high and lifted up, our Lord and our God. We want to see the devil as the defeated foe that he is, crushed and underneath our feet. We want to see the fulfillment of the words that you spoke, that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Thank you for new vision. Thank you for bringing us back to divine order. Thank you for self-awareness. Thank you for causing us to be able to grip the world with your power so that many souls will be saved and will not perish because we lack vision. But we thank you because we are your army and we are marching forth with the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That you are walking with us and you are performing signs, wonders, and miracles. And with your supernatural touch, O oh God, upon our lives, we, O oh God, are weaning many souls unto your kingdom. Thank you for planting every one of us in the place where we belong. And we thank you today because we are right now consecrating our souls unto thee. And we are saying that we will listen to your spirit. We will walk in accordance to the leading of your spirit all the days of our lives to fulfill the task that you have ahead of of us. In Jesus' name we have prayed and believed. Amen and amen.